The Seattle Mariners have been one of baseball's hottest teams as of late. They have won 20 of their past 30 games, which has brought them to 60 and 52, which leaves them only six games behind the Texas Rangers for first place in the National League West. Not only are they coming for the National League West, but they're also coming quickly for the Toronto Blue Jays for the last wildcard spot in the American League, as they are only trailing them by two and a half games. And with Seattle being so hot, I want to go over their team top to bottom today and go over why I think they should not be slept on as a legitimate American League contender. First, let's take a look at Seattle offensively. As we stand today, they have a 715 team OPS, which ranks 20th in baseball, and 137 home runs, which ranks 11th. Julio Rodriguez has been leading the charge as, so far on the year, he's hitting 257 with 18 home runs and 27 stolen bases. And as good as those numbers sound, the reigning American League Rookie of the Year is, by his standards, having a down season, so I would not be surprised at all to see him get hot towards the end of the season and really carry Seattle down the stretch. They've also been getting some good offensive contributions from J.P. Crawford, who on the year is hitting 263 with 10 home runs. Ty France hasn't necessarily been great, but he has been hitting towards the middle of this lineup most of the season as, on the year, he's hitting 251 with 8 home runs. Eugenio Suarez has been an RBI machine as of late, as all in all on the air, he's hitting 232 with 16 home runs and 72 runs driven in. Teoscar Hernandez is having a pretty decent season himself, as on the year, he's hitting 245 with 17 home runs and 5 stolen bases. Behind the plate, Kyle Rowley has been one of the best offensive catchers in baseball, at least in terms of power, as on the year, he's hitting 225 with 18 bombs. Prior to the really dumb foot injury that Jared Kelenic sustained last month, he was having a very good season, as he was hitting 252 with 11 home runs and 12 stolen bases. Seattle has also gotten some contributions from a not-so-familiar name in Jose Caballero, who on the air is only hitting 223 with 3 home runs, but he does have 19 stolen bases on the year. As for a few other names who have been contributing offensively for Seattle, we have Tom Murphy, Josh Rojas, and Mike Ford. So for this Seattle offense, it is definitely not one of the better offenses in baseball. It's not bad either, so I think they're sort of middle of the pack, and I think this offensive group is good enough to get them over the hump in the postseason with how good this pitching staff is. Now, moving on to their pitching, as I said, it's great as they currently have a 3.8 team ERA, which is tied for fourth in baseball. This pitching staff is led by the ace in Luis Castillo, who is very quietly putting together a really good season as in 137 innings, he's posted a 3.21 ERA with 155 strikeouts. George Kirby is another very talented arm in this rotation who on the year in 136 innings has a 3.32 ERA with 124 punchouts. Logan Gilbert is another very good arm in this rotation as in 131 innings he's posted a 3.86 ERA with 126 strikeouts. With Robbie Ray going down early on this season, Bryce Miller has filled in nicely as in 86 innings, he's posted a 4.2 ERA with 85 strikeouts. And for the fifth and final spot in this rotation, it's been occupied by Brian Wu, who has also been not too bad as in 55 innings, he has a 4.75 ERA with 60 strikeouts. Now this rotation is very good, as I said, I honestly think it may be one of the most deep starting rotations in baseball, they just don't necessarily have any weak links. Now moving on to their bullpen, this is their strong suit as they have a 3.51 bullpen ERA which ranks second in baseball. The closer at the moment and for the rest of the season looks to be Andres Munoz who in 28 innings has posted a 2.93 ERA with 5 saves. And being one of the best bullpens is going to come with lots of depth as they've gotten some great innings from Matt Brash, Justin Topa, Taylor Sacedo, and Gabe Spear. So as I said, this bullpen is really good. They did trade away Paul Sewell to the Diamondbacks at the deadline, but Andres Munoz is one of the best relievers in baseball in my opinion. I know the numbers might not say so, but he has some of the best stuff and when he gets going, he is virtually unhittable. So now that we went through this roster top to bottom, I quickly want to go over why I think they are legitimate contenders in the American League. First, let's go over how they're going to make the postseason. It's not rocket science here, they're going to have to win a lot of games to make the postseason, and that comes with the fourth easiest remaining schedule in baseball. That's right, they have plenty of games against very weak teams including the Oakland A's, Kansas City Royals, and Chicago White Sox. So not only is Seattle one of the hottest teams in baseball, but pair that with a very soft schedule over the final couple months, and they could very well see themselves sitting at 90 wins come September. Now, I don't want to go too crazy here and say that Seattle is going to take the American League West because the Rangers and the Astros are very good baseball teams and they deserve their respect. 
But as I said, Seattle is very hot and they have a very easy schedule the rest of the way, so I would not be surprised at all to see them make the American League wildcard. And for a team who massively outperformed expectations last year and their first postseason in 20 plus years, I think there is not too much pressure on Seattle. I think they're going to go out there and play some very good baseball if they make the postseason, especially with the dominant bullpen that they have. And at this point in time, it doesn't feel like a lot of people are looking at Seattle as legitimate World Series contenders, but I would not be surprised at all if they were this year's version of the Philadelphia Phillies. So yeah, I like Seattle a lot the rest of the way. I think they're going to go on a very good run and make the postseason and potentially make some noise when they get there. Let me know what you guys think of Seattle down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.